Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the custodi uh, traditional custodians of the land that we stand, past, present and emerging. Um, and with that, when I say that, I always like to uh, consider the, the, and, and express my great gratitude to uh, the stories that have been passed on. Uh, unfortunately, not enough yet. Um, and I'm hoping that it will be much more in the future. I was very fortunate to, uh, to be living in Brisbane when uh, Maurice Ortega, Camilla Birkland, Mary Andrew, um, uh, Ray Cook, um, Jay Younger, I believe, started the uh, Queensland Centre for Photography in 2004. So what we see here is a small glimpse of a 10-year celebration of photography in, uh, in Australia. Um, I'm saying Australia because there are quite a few artists uh, here that uh, were not from Queensland, um, as it later uh, became, uh, as, as the Queensland Centre of Photography, QCP, grew. Um, but in the beginning it was set up as a platform for Queensland photographic artists. Now again, when I would say photographic, we need to think of the word photographic in a in a very broad spectrum. It's a it's a uh, platform that where artists work with the medium of photography, but not necessarily only with the medium of photography, and the medium of photography in all its form. So it could be. Um, um, a work that is uh, is created on Photoshop uh, or darkroom techniques or the combination of the two uh, or cutting and pasting drawing onto the photographs painting onto the photographs anything was possible so that's really one of the premises that they said from the beginning it, 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 to look at contemporary photography and experimental photography so that's really what uh, was one of the main drives now if we look at that if we look at the history of photography uh, of course we come back to the, particular, the history of art in general uh, we look at uh, landscape we look at uh, we look at um, uh, still lives we look at portraiture they were really the four the three main streams and for those uh, in terms of the history uh, portraiture is really where it mainly started. It, it, you had a portrait, and around the portrait, you, you, as in, in, in terms of, com of complete art, uh, you would have maybe a few items that were on the table in front of the person that was being painted, and you had a landscape behind it. But all of that told you stories about that person, and then slowly they separated. Slowly you became, you had more of a still life painting, and you had a, a landscape, but in the past it was, it was just one landscape was part of the portrait that was painted or it would have been a, a, a indoor setting so here the closest representation to that idea of the of um, of the still life painting um, is uh, and you probably saw it as you walked in uh, is the uh, one of the founding members of the Queensland Centre of Photography Marion Drew a uh, much loved uh, friend of mine uh, and a fantastic artist and, pos and, and one of the um, best known photographic artists in Queensland uh, at the moment. Um, so Marion Drew's work uh, looks at that idea, the, the history of, um, of still life. The German um, uh, artists, how they used uh, still life in their paintings, but then she looked at the idea of dead animals in Australia. Uh, native animals in Australia that she placed on the table. The background that you see in the works is often uh, based on the landscape where she would have found the animals or where the animals would have lived. Um, I'm just going to pedal a, a little bit about that because it really talks more, much more about the traditional way of photography, but at the same time it doesn't. Because um, if you look at the, a lot of these still life paintings in the past they were much more based on the idea of wealth. So if you, um, if you were a, a musician uh, and you, uh, you had money to paint to, to have so a painter paint a uh, still life for you, then it may have an instrument in there or a, a sheet of, of, of music notes. 
uh, or if you were a well-traveled person and you had recently come back from, uh, from uh, or were trading with Japan, there might be a really beautiful porcelain cup in there. But if you're also trading with, the, uh, with South America, then in that beautiful porcelain cup may have been some hot chocolate. So those beautiful combinations. So when you look at these paintings, it's not just a beautiful still life painting. It told you something about the person who it was painted for or the person that commissioned the artist. Now in Marion Drews, um, she's putting much more of her own um, thoughts uh, about still life and, and history into the, into the work. So it, it's, a, it's a, an ongoing aspect of, um, of, of that genre, uh, if you like. Now that when you look at the collection of the Queensland Centre of Photography, keep in mind, it's 10 years, 2004 to 2014. So if you look at it now, or if you look at it in the future, because yes, you can look at it this in the future, because it will be part of the collection here, this entire uh, uh, set of 108 works. Uh, where, um, yeah, um, we, are, we are really excited, the fact that it is come, become part of the collection here, uh, of an amazing new uh, building that you're about to have uh, which is extremely exciting um, and uh, when uh, a few years ago when uh, like, no, a year ago only actually even less I think yeah. we, we talked about um, about the building and I saw the site and um, and I knew that we still had this collection that needed to find a home uh, it was just really wonderful to to finally have the, have that happen and have the result of the first showing of that uh, here at the moment um, so, but always think of the, the time, and it's, that's with every artwork, I suppose we need to look at, okay, when was this artwork created? What was the time, what happened? Now, one of the th reasons I'm saying that to you as well is like, this show is, is what's, what's hanging here is, um, is pretty good in terms of uh, it's, it's, it's uh, one third of the artists represented in this is female, and two thirds is male. It should be 50-50, okay? But we have to keep in mind that if we look at the collection, you'll find that the majority of it is also male. So I would say the ratio is probably about the same. Now, if you were to curate an exhibition now or a collection, then it would, well, I would like to think that it would be one of the things that you keep in mind, that you have a collection that is, uh, that is much more based on equality of, of all. Um, now, I'm not saying that Maurice and Camilla didn't think of that. If we look at the people that were employed there, uh, that equality was always there. Um, and uh, it, it was quite really beautiful to, to see that. And, and there they really pushed, uh, pushed that as well. They really, it was, Queensland Centre of Photography was one, it became one of those um, community centres, one of those community places where uh, people would go to to, uh, to not only look at art, but have that, have that drink and talk with each other uh, to get ideas, uh, to work together on projects. Um, so they started off in Belimba, uh, just over the river uh, from, uh, from the old wool, uh, wool, wool stores in, uh, in um, uh, on just off, actually it wasn't Oxford, anyone been to Belimba? Just off Oxford Street, and Oxford Street. yeah, um, so it was a uh, was a warehouse, a small warehouse uh, that they uh, converted to to the centre. Uh, there's some crazy parties that happened there, um, which was fantastic. Um, yeah, one of them ended up in a it was a, it was a wrestling party, but um, in in jelly that happened at the front, um, and then someone complained, but somehow they knew that the person complained, so they quickly cleaned everything up and they had only just finished cleaning up. This was very late in the night. Um, and uh, then police came and was like, I'm not sure what you're talking about here. Um, so it was quite, quite funny, uh, some of those parties. But I think that, that the most important part of being part of that community was that dialogue between artists and between everything was possible. Um, and so, um, th th there, th there was this really healthy competition between the artists that was there to um, to push further, um, to see a, a, a to, to be part of a group uh, where Marion Drew was part of, uh, where Ray Cook uh, already quite established artists in the industry, 
uh, to, and to be part of that, to, to be able to have conversations like that. It definitely uh, pushed me as an artist into a very different different world. Um, I, um, when I started my photography, I started as a documentary photographer um, and I, I wasn't quite sure how I fitted in that, uh, that world, but slowly I became part of that world uh, as, a, as an artist. Um, and of course there is that, there's, there's, there's always that line between, well, there, there isn't anymore, uh, but between people say art and photography, and then they say photography, art photography and documentary photography, it's all art, everything is art. So, um, and um, so, the, so the works that you see here, they vary between uh, most of this self-expression, uh, they vary blah, 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 they, they vary between traditional photography combined with historical photographs, um, stories of the past um, um, but most of it is conceptual driven. So concept comes first um, and then the rest. So that is uh, pretty much all of the work you see here is conceptually driven. So really looking at contemporary art uh, form rather than the photographic uh, as, as photographic practice. Now, I'm saying that, but not undermining the idea of technique. Um, if we look at these works, they're all uh, artists that have worked within that technique or have developed te that technique to a, to a uh, and most of them are still practicing. So uh, you have, um, uh, if we look at uh, Ray Cook's uh, The Elephant there, uh, so it, it is a darkroom print, um, a silver gelatin print, and then he hand tones it uh, with a brush. So it is that process that, that he worked with. Um, Camilla Birkland, a beautiful setup of, of the work there. So Camilla Ber Birkland was uh, Maurice Ortega, which we have here, uh, standing in the middle, pointing at us. Uh, that is the director, uh, of, was the director of the Queensland Centre of Photography. Uh, Camilla Birkland, his wife, uh, was the uh, artist of that work. The person standing on the right here with the glasses, that's Ray Cook, who made the work of the elephant. And uh, Gia is standing on the side there. That idea, so the, they started off, Maurice and Camilla started off with organising, getting a, a a place together for Queensland artists. Now very soon um, we started, he started looking, thinking further. I mean Maurice, uh, he's Mexican uh, and uh, it was quite funny to, uh, to, to have him work with, uh, with all the people. Uh, most of the artists came from the Queensland, uh, from Queensland College of Art, in the, from the photography department. Maurice and Camilla both used to teach there. Of course Marion Drew used to teach there. Uh, Jay Younger used to teach there. Do we have a Jay Younger? No, no. Um, he used to teach there. Um, uh, I know that there is a Nathan Corum of the work. He used to teach at uh, the college. Ray Cook used to teach at the college. Um, who else? Uh, Alex Perry, who's lying, the reclining female photograph there. Um, she used to work for uh, as an administrator, but most of the partly uh, paid, partly volunteer. She now works the, for the Museum of Brisbane. Um, the um, and there is also work by Martin Smith, I believe, in the collection. Um, he still teaches at uh, Queensland College at uh, Queensland College of Art as well. So we, they they were very much connected to that. Now the collection that you see here. Uh, was a combination, or it kind of happened in the combination of two things. The majority of it, the, the works, they were directly donated by the artists. There's two works in the collection of me, and that's, yeah, so yeah, I had a show at the, at the gallery, uh, and the amount of things that they did for me as an artist, um, I appreciated that. And uh, Maurice was quite forward with asking about it too. Uh, would you like to donate this particular work to the collection? Um, and it's like, and at first it was, as, not, I'm not sure how many artists are here, but as a, um, I think as an artist you think, well that cost me a lot of money, and that frame around that, that cost me about 800 bucks. Um, and it's like, so what am I going to do? But at the same time, uh, if your work is then part of the collection, then you can put it on the CV, and if that organization is indeed doing a lot of work for you, then it's 
absolutely worth it. Um, now, especially now if we look at this, it's a 10 year uh, um, looking back at the Queensland Centre of Photography is going into the history of the organisation and it's only because of all those collections that the work stands very strongly as a body of work. Uh, without that, it just wouldn't, uh, and we're leaving a, um, uh, a legacy behind for an organisation that lasted, lasted 10 years. And sure, unfortunately, it was only 10 years, um, but I like to think of it the other way around. It's like 10 years is a long time. Any business that can, can continue to go for 10 years, that's a long time. Uh, for a director to be working on a project for, in a gallery or in a business, is a long time. I don't think there's many of us, maybe more in the past, that stay in the same job for 10 years. Um, so if, if we're thinking of it in, in, that, in, in that way, um, uh, the, the QCP grew from a small place that was in Belimba to a uh, organization that organized three uh, photography festivals that went around Queensland. So the different, as in different venues uh, were part of it. Um, and, uh, and I think there was one or two um, um, like more like a conference where you came together and we talked about about art, but I think it was only one or two. Mm -hmm. and, the publication. and the publications, so several publications that they printed. Uh, we had uh, shows in Melbourne, in Adelaide, in um, Sydney, a few times, and the Queensland Centre of Photography also started going to uh, photography fairs and mainly photo LA. So they went to photo LA five times. And from that, uh, some of the things that happened from that, uh, Marion Drew uh, is part of the Getty Museum. Um, and um, ah. now I can't think of the. I, I know, I know, the, and, and three artists were picked up by the Getty. So the Getty. Uh, Lakma, no, sorry, one by uh, one by Marion Drew by uh, by the Getty, and three by Lakma, Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Now I'm not sure if you've been in LA, but they are massive institutions. Like we're talking about, uh, Lakma is an institution that's probably about uh, three times the NGV. So that's how big that organization is. So it's a very, very big collection. Chris Bowes, uh, which I think is part of the collection as well, uh, has one work uh, in that collection. Um, I know I can see the, the, the female artist in front of me, but I can't think of her name now. Uh, and the, artist, the other artist that's part of it is myself. Um, so and they picked two of my works. So to be part of that collection is really quite amazing. And that came through the Queensland Center of Photography. If they hadn't gone to LA, um, that wouldn't have happened. And the collection, actually Mark Kimber sold a work to the um, Hells Angels, like the, 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 the guy who started Hells Angels. So it's really like those beautiful connections that, uh, that, you, that you make was really quite... Uh, too scared not to sell to them. Well, that's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. But it was one of those places too that after hours, Leonardo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, so, yeah, uh, came through the space and uh, sometimes he, he selected works that he bought, so I don't think from our booth, but that's the type of people that you see through that. Um, uh, Andy Stewart, from, I believe it's Andy Stewart from, uh, from the police, the guitar, guitarist or drummer, any police fans here? Um, he came through, but he's also a photographic artist. So there was all those type of people that, that, uh, that walked through. Um, and then through that process too, a few of the artists also got picked up by commercial artists, uh, commercial galleries like Kim DeMuth. Uh, Kim DeMuth and myself, we both are represented by a gallery in Germany, Kunst Complex. So those are the things that kind of happened because it created a platform for us to do so. They were a voice for us to, to they would carry our, our art as, as a voice to other people. And it's, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful uh, 10 years and unfortunately after 10 years, uh, the, um, the Newman government uh, stopped funding the arts. Uh, and that was one of the reasons, uh, that was the main reason that uh, they, they couldn't continue. Um, I was only a board member of the last three years for the organization, uh, but it was, uh, I, learned, I learned a lot, I have to say, uh, through that process. But I think, it's, I think that's the most important part uh, was it was a community and we worked together as a community and we, we didn't 
um, we didn't. Um, it was a very healthy competition, and if if someone got through, then we applauded that altogether. It was like I don't feel there was well, definitely not something that I that I saw. Uh, it was a healthy, a very healthy organisation, and uh, and we 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 support it. And yeah, never got any. Uh, I, I'm proud to have been part of that. And so we're in a really interesting time, I think, for Kenton. Um, I'm keen to know 2004, Brisbane, Queensland. What was the drive behind starting QCP? What was the thinking? Is it that um, the Australian Centre for Photography existed and we didn't have a photographic voice in Queensland? How, how did it come from its very sort of concept idea and how did Maurice materialise that? Uh, I have to speculate most of that, uh, but if I if we look at 2004, uh, indeed you had this, uh, the um, the Australian Centre of Photography. Um, so Maurice and Camilla, um, Marion Drew, um, Ray Cook, uh, Jay Younger, they were all working at QCP, and there weren't any galleries that supported their art practice. So wherever they had to go, they always had to go uh, higher a space uh, or do it at the, the, at the gallery, um, at the university gallery, but they, that university gallery often also was open for a lot of other artists, but not, they wouldn't uh, be able to serve the breadth of photography. They came out of uh, QCA. So um, they needed to create a space, and a space that would push people to. There's one thing about uh, and that, that Maurice always looked at what after university. Um, as a student, what do you do after university? Uh, what is your platform? Where can you show work? Uh, and it doesn't matter, it's not only universities, also when you, you do other courses. Where do you go? What do you do after this? So Maurice and Camilla and, and the, 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 found, the, the foundation of QCP, they created a space for people to continue and to, for people to, sp to continue to share the love and passion for photographic art practice um, and that's kind of really what's what they started and where it where it went to yeah and getting a space and starting it to happen mm -hmm. like who's that. going to paint the walls <laughs> um, <laughs> yes baby steps yeah baby steps. there's a lot of people here who represent um, Walter Reed artists so I think we're fortunate that the community here has galleries has studios um, but if you didn't have that, how did how did QCP come about physically? I think um, the the um, um, I don't know what the first steps were when they did it. Uh, the reason I don't know was because I was overseas. Uh, I wasn't in Brisbane. Uh, I, I was doing an artisan residency in Estonia, and there's one work of that in the collection. There's books here too on that. Um, I feel like I'm promoting my own work here. Um, <laughs> um, I was part of it, I suppose. Still am. Um, so I don't know how what they how they got the financial aspect together and how they started. Uh, Maurice and Camilla lived in Belimba, so the area was well known to them. Um, for them to then find uh, find a space that was suitable. Um, yeah. yeah. And then funding and then artists and so obviously they were the nucleus behind the activity and yep. it flowed from them. Yep. I mean they always had uh, sponsors, uh, sp they looked at sponsorship, uh, they had sponsorship through Griffith University, uh, they had uh, and uh, Brisbane Digital Imaging. Uh, Martin Berry uh, did a lot of the printing for the artists and it was always at a discounted rate. Um, um, yeah, there was quite a few organisations that really supported QCP um, and they had, of course, government funding. There was always government funding for the first few years uh, and then also applying for other funds like every other arts organisation uh, yeah, that you have to do. But I think it was... Um, I mean, it's knowing what... What, what you need to tap into in terms of what is the uh, what is the government looking for or what is the education world looking for uh, and to make sure you tap into all those parts. Uh, saying that, um, I think Maurice became part of the Lions Club um, because he knew there would be people with money there so they would then come to QCP to buy work. 
um, and um, and to those type of things. But then we also had um, we had a um, a healthy group of people that were art lovers um, and that also had money, so they would buy the occasional artwork. Um, and uh, Anne Maurice would also help people to buy artwork. Um, I actually can remember uh, a few of at those days the at the QCA uh, they had the art auctions and the money would go to the end of the year exhibitions uh, and some of those works you saw there was like oh and it was quite interesting to uh, to be in that space and Maurice would either bid put bids in for some of the collectors if they couldn't make it um, and um, yeah, Dale Hewson was was pretty one of the art, one of the uh, people that was a regular face uh, and a, an absolutely lovely man, um, and he he has a very substantial collection of photographic prints and photographic art, larger than this, um, and uh, but a lovely man, lovely, and it was really good to have him uh, and his way of looking at art as well. So, but those those yeah, it was a great place to actually buy art. I remember one time. Uh, Maurice was bidding for someone, um, and it wasn't Mary and Drew. Um, and but the, the artwork was uh, it was uh, art, artwork that was created in the powerhouse, Bristol Powerhouse, before it became the powerhouse. You have that one in the collection. You have that one in the collection with the with the lines up. So I've got another one's version of it too because I was bidding against Maurice, and I, at one stage I looked at Maurice like. I'm gonna get this, <laughs> and I did. I did. I think he uh, realised. But it was it was this beautiful thing that uh, that we uh, yeah we that we shared, and um, yeah we just. I think the the main part about any organisation is 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 be upfront and and yeah know what you know what your what your aim is, know what your what your goals are, your your and then then go forth with that. Probably worth um, joining in on the conversation. We have some representatives from um, the photography, from the printmakers, from the contemporary artists. So I guess, yeah, multiple hats running uh, individual practices and then also um, artists run spaces as well. So Henry, yeah, Henry is here if you have any ideas or thoughts about QCP. Henry, as well as a um Space space. Did they have equipment and resources that artists, and especially emerging photographers, could access at the centre as well? Or was it primarily to promote the finished product? Yeah, primarily to promote the finished product. Uh, but if you had, uh, if you were applying for a grant and you wanted to run a pa uh, past them. Absolutely, they would they would be there, and they would also give you letters of support. Um, but that was also because their affiliation with the Queensland Centre of with the Queensland College of Art was so close that. Of most artists would go there to to get that done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, artists from the uh, from other universities were also involved uh, with the centre. But it was mainly the most artists came from the Queensland College of, uh, College of Art. Uh, Kim De Ruth came from QUT, um, and then there was also some artists that uh, Peter Mills did. Uh, he was actually uh, lecturing at um, at uh, UQ Art Museum at UQ. Um, and so yeah, but it was there was always that overlay. Um, so we had we, we had a very strong connection with other universities where they could then go, and and yeah, and work with, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned that there was quite a lot of dialogue between the artists. Yeah. Where, where did that occur? If it wasn't a workshop Opening. situation so much as in a place where you could make work. So did you just do that in the gallery? In the, in the gallery, opening nights, uh, but also um, if you, for those that were working at university, in the corridors of university, having lunch, and okay. all those, all those places. So the impromptu. Yeah, but we also had, um, in, uh, there were some dinners involved as well, um, and but yeah, that, that was limited. Um, yeah, I would have liked to see much more of that, but that, that's think that's saying that now. Uh, then it was different. Mm -hmm. uh, things like I think there is a big difference between our situation now uh, to the past. Um, the when everything is rosy, when everything goes really well, we all sit very comfortable within our own environment and create. Mm -hmm. Whereas when times are tougher, we tend to look more at each other and help each other. 
Um, and I mean, the last time I was here, um, I, yeah, Bianca showed me the beautiful space that you've called a four-story building of all art forms. Uh, but one of the first things that came to my mind, why are they all boxed into their own little environment? Why are they not working together? Imagine doing collaboration works with all different artists. Look, to me, like, I would, I would want to do all of it. Every, every single floor, I would want to do everything. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, it's one of those things. But that's me saying that, actually, which is actually funny that I'm saying that, because I'm a one-trick pony <laughs> with my art practice. I do one thing, and that's it. But I, the idea of being able to do so much, yeah. but I suppose uh, that probably comes from, and I think that's, uh, I, I also come from an art teaching background. I did do some teaching at QCA as well as QUT. So to have to have to, to be surrounded by students and have them come to you with ideas and brainstorm with them, that constant firing of ideas at each other, uh, is also something that continued with all with QCP. And it was it was so wonderful. Like I would come back from the openings at QCP with and completely either my mind would be completely like. Oh, what's the next thing I can do? Or I will be completely exhausted because I gave my all my energy to everyone else. Um, but it was wonderful. It was wonderful to be in that position and to do that. And it's like, I think it's something that I still do now. I can't, when I'm sitting down uh, and listening to people with their ideas, I can't stop thinking about, oh, have they done this? What about that? Have they thought of this? And I, uh, yeah, constantly. And I think it's a wonderful, th that, to me, that creative dialogue mm -hmm. That's, if that's missing, then why have an organisation? So I'm interested in closing off with a question saying, through the QCP collection um, and the activity that it did in Brisbane, in that 10 years, what was a standout opportunity for engaging through art that it supported? So engaging through art uh, in Brisbane, or, or what, what it's overall supported? Yeah, yeah, what was, I guess, it, it, it its core premise was art. Yeah. So, what was the best, in, the the most memorable engagement outcome that stands with you? That was a success of QCB. I wrestling might be up there. Yes, the wrestling was up there. Yeah. I wasn't part of the. Uh, it must have been when I was uh, in 2004. When I was, uh, I would have joined them in. Yeah, I would have joined. Um, I think the Queensland Festival of Photography was probably the stand out um, and part of that too was that uh, three people would travel to different parts in Queensland um, and uh, and people would come, could come with their portfolio and we would discuss portfolio and it was always two from two from the center and then the artists so it was a really beautiful dialogue and it was also really good because sometimes the other person didn't agree with that person and we also said that and it wasn't about agreeing it was about getting different perspectives on your work and um, and it, it was quite clever with that too because from that too some of those artists were then able to come to Brisbane to have a show in Brisbane so it was that continuation of that as well so um, the, the premise really was to create a center of Queensland photography um, and to put Queensland photography on the map um, and I think it did that I really think that uh, we know we, we it's that whole thing it's like uh, when you live in um, uh, when you live in uh, in a small country town then you look up to Rockhampton if you live in Rockhampton you may look up to Brisbane when you live in Brisbane you look up to Sydney and Melbourne um, and I mean I don't know why but that's something that people do but it's also the other way around where people in those centers think oh, they only live in Brisbane, what would they know? Like as in uh, Melbourne and Sydney. So a lot of artists and have moved from Brisbane to Sydney and Melbourne. And not only artists in every industry that happens, but it also happens from here, of course, to, uh, to Brisbane or to Melbourne and Sydney, and also from smaller country towns. And that's a phenomenon that happens everywhere. How can you stop it? You can't. That's just the way it is. Uh, and I think um, uh, it's, it's, it's part of it. But what you can do is acknowledge that these artists are from that. Um, and I think that's an important part. The, if we look at our state galleries, that's the job of the state gallery too, to say these are artists from our state. 
um, and um, and it's the same and, and create an archive of artists from the state. So Queensland Centre of Photography try to do that with uh, the photographic industry as well, but looking at the the change, the, the great shift in photography going from it's purely being documentary photography into the arts and then really embracing that idea of conceptual photographic art practice in Queensland and these are the works that come from Queensland and then they were able to go further around Australia and be shown further in our, around Australia and be placed next to it and after a little while uh, it also went Came the, became the other way around, where people down south heard about the Queensland Centre of Photography and then started engaging with us and started showing with us. Uh, ben Allion, the two black and white works on the sides there. Um, Deborah Powie, the uh, three works next to each other there. Uh, Adelaide, Ben, ben Allion uh, in um, uh, Sydney. And then the work right on the top with the light in their house, uh, that's Mark Kimber. And Mark Kimber is actually showing in the middle of the work that's a portrait of him by William Wilson, uh, took that photograph. That photograph was actually taken in at Photo LA. Uh, he had a, a studio set up and they are uh, done with, a, a, sorry, a, a, a one of those really old processes, but I can't think of what it is anymore. Har highly toxic, no, highly toxic, massive, like uh, not even 5.4, but plates that big, that's the size of the plate that he, uh, he used. So really beautiful work process. Uh, so yeah, there's, uh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll end on that. If you can thank Henry with me and do sale for coffee.